Oh snap, Blaze is going live. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Thank you for joining me. Just in case you're joining me for the very first time, I'm your host of one they call Brian Glaze Gibbs. And this is my ministry. What I talk about, I talk about the good, I talk about the bad, I talk about the ugly. I talk about my life experience, some of the things that I've been through, and hope of by sharing it, it will stop some young kid in a track and get them to understand that crime doesn't pay. Only thing they're gonna happen if they try to take shortcut in the easy way in life, what they're gonna do is they're gonna end up here in a jail cell or they're going to end up in a graveyard at an early age. Today, what I'm going to talk about, um, it's a gentleman, Born Magnetic. Shout out to Born Magnetic. He got a piece out, and basically what he's supposed to be doing in the documentary regards his brother, um, Kason, Calvin Hudson. May his soul rest in peace and spirit be lifted. And basically, in one of the last piece that he put out, he's saying that um, something about his brother dying over PYT. No, his brother kill Hollywood over PYT, okay? Now, let me go deep and listen to the words that come out of my mouth, okay? Hollywood, Hollywood was not a stick-up kid, okay? Big guy, six foot two, six foot three, muscle in his teeth, muscle in his lips, muscle all over him. Um, so right now where it's like six two, six three, big guy, big strong kid or whatever. So what happened is when I got acquitted in 1987, me and Ward used to hang out. And one day in particular, we was in the Marcy Project. And when we was in the Marcy Project, um, hanging out, me, Hollywood, a bunch of people, unique for Marcy. And here it is, this young lady came by. Pretty light-skinned young lady. And when she came by, Wood introduced me to her, Yolanda. You know, slob her down, kiss her. That's my girl. So as the girl left, Wood told me that, yo, she used to deal with K. Sean. And my advice to Wood, I said, look, man, here it is, leave her alone. It's not even worth the headache. The difference is if she's to mess with Kayshawn, when he come home, he gonna still claim as his girl, leave her alone, it's not worth it. Wood say he was gonna leave her alone, okay? Now, what Born Magnetti is saying is that Wood took, stole jewelry that belonged to Kayshawn at her house. That didn't happen, okay? Like I say, it's four side of the story. Kayshawn's side, Wood side, Yolanda side, and the truth. What happened is, like I say, Yolanda probably told, you know what I'm saying, Kayshawn that Wood beat her. I took the jewelry from her and she probably pawned it. I sold it. Wood back then was making plenty of paper. And what I'm saying right now, I know that for a fact. He was going down to out of town, hustling, selling pee, boy, and making plenty of money. And the difference is right now, taking care of that girl. So here it is, and when Kayshawn came home, what happened was, guess what? Somehow they both bump into each other at Yolanda house. So when they bump into each other at Yolanda house, a week prior to that, me and Wood got into a big beef in Cyprus. And when we got into that beef, I told Wood, you know, he was talking shit. And I, right now it was like I say, I went up on him and I slap him, whop. You know what I'm saying? Don't get me wrong. He holding me, so I couldn't do anything to him. And right now, I say, look, man, keep my name out your mouth. And I'm trying to get him, but he holding me. What a strong kid. Technicality, I'm telling you straight up. Wood could have squashed me like a jelly bean. Literally. Wood could have, I'm only 5'9", 150. Wood like 6'2", six, 6'3", six, like probably 220 solid. So I'm not going to sit here and lie. He could have crushed me like a jelly bean because he's a big, strong kid. And he had a knuckle game. So here it is, I told him that day, I said, look, man, you gonna need me before I need you. A week later, okay, he got into the incident with Kason, okay, at Yolanda house. So when he got into that incident, guess what happened? Kayshawn and his guys, like two other guys that was with Kayshawn. And what they did was, was they got into a competition house. They said, take it outside. They went outside. When they went outside, they click on wood, they pull out their guns, and they rob wood. They took all the wood jewelry, okay? When they took all the Hollywood jewelry, guess what? Wood is a type of individual, if y'all know anything about Christopher Brother, AK Hollywood, 
he's the type of brother, he loved popping trash. And what he told, because they was an attendant, they was not going to kill Wood. They was not going to shoot Wood. What they was going to do is just rob him. Because that's what he do. Okay, Sean is n known, notorious stick-up kid. Okay? But they wasn't going to rob him. But Wood stopped popping trash. Wood told him, listen, if y'all put down the gun, I'll whip all three of y'all behind. Okay? Sit back and think about it. Here it is. He coming at them. They don't rob him. They got the gun. They got the drop. But he telling them, if they put down the guns, he will beat the living daylight out of all three of them. He hitting his chest like he's King Kong Bundy. You know? So the different was like he's Gorilla Monsoon. So these guys, literally, they got the upper hand because they got the gun. But they got frightened. And you know what? They cut loose, and that's when they killed Wood. So it didn't have nothing to do with K or Wood stole or snuck thief or took the jewelry that belonged to K. Sean out the house. That is pure DBS. So once again, regardless of what, like you saying somebody's lying, guess what? It's not me. I don't got nothing to gain from that. The difference is, well, if you want to say something, make sure you got all your facts and your duck in a row. That's the difference. Make sure you understand and know right now is what is true and what is not true. I understand that's your brother. And it's right now is, guess what? I got nothing but respect for your brother. But in the same token, I'm telling you what happened during that period of time. And right now is your brother murder Wood over a robbery. Like I say, that's what it is. He murdered Wood over Robbie and over that girl. The beef was over the girl, Yolanda. And Yolanda got high off of playing cats. Pretty light-skinned thing. So she played these cats. She was the manipulator. She played these cats. And she liked that. She liked the fact that she could pull strings like that. So if you sit back and you think about it and you analyze it, I understand what you're saying is, you know, they was in love. Okay, cool. They was in love. How many girls in love, you know what I'm saying, with a cat in jail, but they still got knees? So the difference is, as you say, he got you got plenty of love letter that your brother and her was writing each other. So the difference is, while Wood would probably like, you know, having sex with her, she writing, here, I love you, K. Sean. I can't wait till you come home. Come on, man. Let's get real. Let's deal with reality for what it is, man. But the difference is right now is me. I don't got nothing to game. I don't got nothing to game to say what I'm saying. Only thing I'm trying to tell you right now is all this got to stop. We got to get these kids to understand, guess what? Regardless of what, stick to one woman. Woman, stick to one man. You know what? Like I told you, get jobs. Get out there right now. Let's live law abiding, productive citizen life. Not as far as the street guys selling drugs, hustling, sticking up. Come on, boosting. What's that all about? We as people have to be better than that, man. Because if we keep doing that negativity, all of us, you know what's going to happen? They're going to die in here. They're going to die in here. They're going to die like Kayshawn, like Wood, and like so many other at a young age in their 20s. What's cool about that? Are they going to mold us right now, spend the rest of their life in jail? For what? Over some nonsense. That's not worth it. So once again, right now, the fact is when K. Sean came home and she probably did have his jewelry, but guess what? She wanted to live too. Despite Wood probably was giving her money, she probably living way beyond her means, taking care of her family. So the difference is right now, she probably pawned our soul, your brother jewelry, and used Wood as a scapegoat. So, but once again, they had the jewelry. They, like you say, oh yeah, if he took my jewelry, my brother blew his head off. That didn't happen that way. Your brother blew his head off because right now when, when Wood start acting like Gorilla Monsoon and telling them right now they put the gun down, what he was going to do to them, your brother panicked and got the, uh, they, they start firing at Wood. That's what happened. So once again, there are four sides of the story, of that particular story. Kayshawn's side, may he so rest in peace. Hollywood's side, may his so rest in peace. And it's in Yolanda's side and the truth. And if you want to deal with reality, like I say, that's your brother. You're supposed to be bigging him up. But the difference is the truth is the truth. Okay, yeah, he, he, he had the gun game. But the difference is he wouldn't have been no match for Wood. Despite he had two other guys that was with him. But once again, man, listen. We got to teach them how to resolve situation while using the guns. While sticking up our own people while hurting our own people, while killing our own people, while poisoning our own people. Listen, 
That's what it's all about, man. How do we now get together to get these kids to understand, guess what? How many life were wasted? Over materialistic things that don't even carry no matter. It don't even carry no value these days in time. Okay? So, folks, listen. Thank you for joining me. Hopefully, right now, you enjoy this piece. This is on the Brian Glaze Gibbs Patreon. I got more, more, more things coming. Make sure you subscribe to my Patreon. Sign up. I got a lot of different content that I will be talking about that I will be sharing with people. Thank you once again. Thank you for joining me. Peace love and prosperity hit that like button right now subscribe to my youtube channel follow me on instagram brian glaze gibbs crime doesn't pay if i can change anybody can change why folks change come from fit in yo glaze i just got to my favorite part of your book this is out of prison as a new person so page 308 may of 1998 that's actually when I had the pleasure of meeting you and we worked together on that 1030 to 3 a.m. shift, which was crazy. Um, my respect level just went up like 10 more notches for you. So I knew about your past. I knew about everything that had gone on. But what I didn't know is you were going from $40,000 a day to I think we were making $12 an hour there that night shift. Something crazy. So for you to be able to have that work ethic of going from slanging easy rocks to slanging heavy packages and uh, working that night shift and just being the positive person you were that whole time and offering encouragement to everybody that really what out. drives me is all my life I've been a traditional uh, I would say sort of an allopathic type of nurse that went back to school to become a naturopath because that was where my soul was and I started helping people with all of these chronic illnesses, not just, you know, simple things, but mostly stage four cancer, Lyme disease, autoimmune conditions. It's like at the end of the day, when I went to jail, I was ghetto rich. I had millions. But guess what? When I came home, I came home to nothing. Fall in love with the street. cleansing but then we found out even with losing the colon cleansing we stuck us an amazing amount of energy in our brains